do the most popular weight loss medications of our time, like Wagovi and Saxenda, cause thyroid cancer? I'm Dr. Childs, let's talk about it right now. Before we talk about that, let's take a step back and talk about some basics here. What the heck are GLP-1 agonists? These are incredibly popular weight loss medications that were originally designed to treat diabetes. They were subsequently found to have a profound impact on weight loss, which is why they are now being marketed as weight loss medications. And for those wondering, yes, they do work. In fact, I've personally recommended them and have seen very good results in patients who use them. But is it worth taking something if their negative side effects outweigh their positive benefits? Definitely not. For those wondering, medications in this class of GLP-1 agonists include Wagovi, Ozempic, Sexenda, Victoza, Trulicity, Bayetta, Bidurion, and many others. So what's the big deal? Both animal and human studies, independently of one another, have suggested that there is a link between thyroid cancer and the long-term use of these medications, which has a lot of people who are using them concerned. And if you are somebody thinking about using these medications, or maybe you're using them right now, this is something you should be concerned about because first, you never want to have any type of cancer in your body, period. And second, thyroid cancer and subsequent thyroid removal, which is the treatment for thyroid cancer, will almost assuredly have an impact on your weight and result in weight gain, which is the exact opposite thing you want to have occur if you're taking these medications to cause weight loss in the first place. So let's talk about the studies and how you should think about whether or not the risk is worth using these medications in your individual case. The most recent study from France titled GLP-1 Receptor Agonists and the Risk of Thyroid Cancer concluded that there was, in fact, an increased risk of all thyroid cancer and a rare type of thyroid cancer called medullary thyroid cancer with the use of GLP-1 agonist treatment, in particular after one to three years of use. Putting this into context with some numbers, they found about 2,500 cases of thyroid cancer out of 3.7 million people studied. In practical terms, this equates to a 0.7% incidence of thyroid cancer, in other words, a very small percentage of the total. I'm not saying this is nothing to worry about by any means, because it matters a lot to those 2,500 people who ended up with thyroid cancer. But I am saying that low numbers like this make it easy to create a connection when there is none. Having said all of this, I still think it's ideal to avoid these medications if at all possible because it is absolutely possible to lose weight and feel better without prescription medications like these GLP-1 agonists. And this should always be your first step. But, and this is a big but, I also realize that some people just want faster results because their weight is something that is causing psychological issues for them personally. In addition, there are a lot of patients who are suffering from bad dietary advice from major governmental institutions, and this advice has made it so it's really difficult for them to lose weight. Either way, some people will be using these medications for weight loss, so here are some takeaways to consider before you use them. Number one, if you are going to take them, use them for a short period of time, preferably less than one year. The risk of thyroid cancer in various studies appeared to be with long-term use, not short-term use. So using these medications for one year may allow you to take advantage of all of their benefits while minimizing any negative side effects. And honestly, if you're serious about losing weight and keeping it off, and if you are combining these medications with a whole food diet, regular exercise, and fasting, you really shouldn't have a hard time hitting your target weight goal within about one year. Number two, in terms of cancer risk, I think you can make a solid argument that not losing weight will increase your risk of cancer more than taking these medications. We know that at least 13 different cancers are associated with obesity, including brain, kidney, thyroid, liver, ovary, pancreas, colon, and many more. And this doesn't include the other benefits to your health that come with weight loss, including things like decreasing your risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. So yes, there's definitely an argument that the benefits of weight loss outweigh the risk and side effects associated with these medications. So are they worth it? Maybe, but only in the right situation. And I'd still think you'd be better off doing something like this. Spend your time and energy getting on a whole food diet. It doesn't matter which one, just pick it and stick to it. You can get rapid results with diets like the carnivore diet, the vegan diet, and even going keto. Yes, I know people are going to freak out because I mentioned carnivore and keto together, but I live in a world where there is no single best diet and many different diets can help you lose weight. It's all about figuring out what works best for your body. Number two, get yourself on a fasting routine or a fasting protocol. It's not as hard as you think to fast and fasting is incredibly effective at helping you lose weight. It also occurs fairly rapidly. 
Number three, start exercising like yesterday. My personal recommendation would be to combine a high protein diet with regular resistance training in both men and women. This will help you build lean muscle mass, improve your diet at the same time, and help you lose fat. And number four, if you need an extra oomph and you're not getting the results with just diet and exercise, then spend some time looking into bioidentical thyroid hormones. T3 thyroid hormone is especially effective at helping with weight loss and testosterone replacement therapy is as well. In my opinion, it's far better to use bioidentical hormones, the same type of hormones that your body produces naturally to help and augment your weight loss than a foreign substance like a GLP-1 agonist. And number five, if you tried all of these things, then I would consider going on a GLP-1 agonist, but only for a short period of time and only until you reach your target goal. If you don't do this and you use the GLP-1 agonist just to suppress your appetite and you don't change your diet, all your weight's gonna come back or you're gonna have to stay on it long term and then you will have to accept the risk associated with it. If you're struggling to lose weight, I'd recommend checking out this video next, which outlines the connections between your hormones and how and where you gain weight on your body.